Hey guys, so I cannot believe this year is coming to an end. So in January of this year, I revived an old series on this channel, which was my wrap-up videos, talking about all of the films, TV shows, and books that I've watched slash read in the month. That also used to include video games, but as I have a video game channel now, we talk about them over there. And so for today's video, I thought I would talk to you about my favourite films and favourite TV shows I've watched this year. So it's kind of a roundup, I guess. So a little caveat before I start, I will not be talking about rewatches. So I watched uh, rewatched many films and TV shows this year. An example of that is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I will not be talking about that in this video because I have rewatched it so many times. I'm only going to be talking about films and TV shows I watched for the first time this year. And the second and last caveat is they might not have been released in 2023, but this is the year that I first watched them. So that's why they're in this list. So let's start with films and then we'll end off with TV shows. So these are in no particular order. I watched 22 films this year and I'm going to be talking about four of them. The first one is The Menu. <laughs> what a weird film, but I absolutely loved it. So how do I describe the menu without giving any spoilers? So the premise of this film is this lady is invited to an exclusive dining experience with her partner, ish. <laughs> you find out more about that as we go along. And the head chef, the mastermind behind everything, I guess, is uh, Ray, played by Ray Fiennes. And oh my goodness, is he amazing in this role. So and I would guess you say upper class, an elite group of people all end up traveling to this island for this elite dining experience. And the chef promises it will be one like they have never seen it before. <laughs> and just the way this this film is set out, oh, it's just so good, but it's so difficult to talk about without spoilers. Moving on to my second film, again, a kind of horror, but not really, is Ready or Not. Once again, I don't know if this film came out this year, but it's the first year I watched it. So again, it's really hard to talk about horrors without giving spoilers, isn't it? But Samara Weaving is the main character in this one and oh, she's just incredible as well. As we go along, you'll see it was definitely my year for strong female characters. So the premise of Ready or Not, <laughs> again, this is really difficult for me, is a woman is getting married into a family. And as part of that family's traditions, for one reason or another, they have to play a game. And the game that is picked is hide and seek. So I shall leave the rest to your imagination if you don't know what the film's about. <laughs> but again, I absolutely loved this film. There was something very familiar about it, even though I'd never watched it before. So once again, I don't think this came out this year, but it's this year that I watched it. And that is Cruella. So Cruella is, of course, a <laughs> kind of adaption of the Cruella de Vil character from 101 Dalmatians. Again, played superbly by Emma Stone. Absolutely amazing. And once again, I really, really loved this one. So yeah, I really liked what they did with Cruella. I really did. I thought Emma Thompson was fantastic as well. And I would highly encourage you to watch Cruella if you like Disney, if you like 101 Dalmatians, if you like villain origin stories. I think Cruella is a really good watch. And the final film we're going to talk about before we move on to TV shows is the only film I watched in the cinema this year. Yes, I only went to the cinema once this year. And of course, if you know me, it is The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I adore that movie. This could possibly be the only one on my list that actually came out this year as well. <laughs> but yes, I loved Ballad so, so much. I love the book. I love the Hunger Games franchise. I just, oh, the casting of everybody was superb. It was so true to the book. There were a few nitpicks and gripes that I had. Um, obviously, reading a book first and then watching the film, you do have certain expectations. And don't get me wrong, my expectations were met. There were some things that were not included in the film from the books that I wish had have been included. But in saying that, I understand, you know, limited runtime for a film and whatnot. So I do understand, even though I have my gripes with it, I still think it's absolutely incredible. So in brief, Ballad deals with the 10th annual Hunger Games. It's very hard to describe Ballad, of course, if you've never watched the Hunger Games films. 
in which the future president of Panem, Coriolanus Snow, is actually a mentor for the 10th Hunger Games. So it's really a story about Snow and his rise to power, kind of, and how he becomes the character that we end up seeing in the Hunger Games. But it's so much more than that. It's also about all the supporting characters that are around that. Okay, so we're now moving on to TV shows. I watched 11 TV shows this year. And in terms of favourites, I will only be talking about three because, like I say, I can't include rewatches in this video. So let's start then with The Crown. So I know The Crown didn't come out this year. However, I first started watching it in January of this year. So I have watched all six seasons of The Crown in one year. <laughs> And what a ride The Crown has been, really. So, as you guys may or may not know, I do study royal history. So, <laughs> a bit like the Tudors TV series, we do take The Crown with a pinch of salt at times. It is not as historically accurate as... I don't want to say it should be because, you know, it's a piece of entertainment, so I totally understand. So if you go into it knowing that it's not 100% historically accurate, even though they do a really good job then I think you'll have a much better time with it. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed The Crown. And I have to give a huge honourable mention to everybody who played the Princess Margaret. So unfortunately, I can't remember the young girl's name, but there's Vanessa Kirby, Helena Bonham Carter and Leslie Manville. And like I say, there was a young girl portraying her as well. I didn't know too much about Princess Margaret, to be totally honest with you. My royal history starts sort of medieval Tudor and then coming down. So... My specialisms really are the Tudors and the Georgians. So learning more about our current royal family, current monarchy, was really interesting and it definitely helped with some gaps in my knowledge. And Princess Margaret, I absolutely love her. <laughs> While I'm not going to say she hasn't, hadn't done uh, questionable things in her lifetime, uh, she absolutely did. However, I just, you know, a new special interest for me, Princess Margaret, this year. <laughs> probably talk about the crown for ages but we're going to move on to another sort of a royal one and that is Queen Charlotte the Bridgerton spin-off. I absolutely loved it. So once again it is not very historically accurate. Of course Queen Charlotte was a real person and <laughs> this show is very very loosely based on Queen Charlotte and King George. However I loved it. For what it was I loved it. For the piece of entertainment brilliant and Oh, I just love shows like this because if it encourages people to look at the real history, then I'm all for it. Do you know what I mean? So I absolutely love it. I thought the, some of the scenes in Queen Charlotte were just heartbreaking and I cried my eyes out almost every episode, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. And the final TV show and the final thing for this video is The Full Monty. So I loved this a lot more than I thought I was going to. So I had, of course, watched The Full Monty film and they did a TV series this year and it was all the original cast again. And oh my goodness, I did not expect to have my heart ripped out and torn into a million pieces time and time again, but yet this show really did it. And I tell you something about this show and I've said this on the wrap-ups as well. This is probably my show of the year and I'll tell you why because it is so pertinent and it is so relevant to what is happening now. There is so much depth and so much grit in this show and I'm actually getting genuinely emotional talking about it right now, I really am. I cannot explain to you, I've literally had to pause because I'm getting so emotional, I cannot explain to you why this show hit me just the way it did this year but I, I tell you, I, honestly, I think it's absolutely fantastic and so relevant and so important. And I would encourage everyone, even if you haven't watched the film, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I just think the show, it's, it's just incredible. And I don't know, like I say, why it has affected me so much. But it's really difficult to discuss the Full Monty TV series because it delves into so much, but it's obviously a continuation of the characters' lives from the film. And to do this so many years later, yet the same heart is there, you know, the characters, obviously they've aged, but you, you can't tell in some parts that they've aged, do you know what I mean? Like, just incredible, really, really incredible. And I applaud everyone who had anything to do with it because honestly... I just thought it was phenomenal and I'm going to stop now because I have got dead emotional with this. <laughs> so that is my favourite films and TV shows I watched this year. The next video is going to be my favourite books that I read this year, so a little roundup of those. A little shameless plug, but over on my YouTube... Uh, 
over on my video gaming channel, Ember Games, I have discussed, I don't know when these videos are going out, so I either have discussed or will be discussing my favourite video games of the year and my favourite video game purchases of the year. So if you're interested in that, then please go and check those out. And then in terms of the rest of the year, I'm sure I'll be doing my annual Christmas haul video and, of course, a December wrap-up. So I'm not sure what else is coming, but look out for those three videos. So just to reiterate, I'm doing my favourite books of the year, uh, potentially a Christmas haul and a December wrap-up. And that should round off the end of the year nicely. So thank you very much for watching. Please let me know what your favourite films and TV shows of this year were. I'd be really interested to find out and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.